We're about a month and a half away from the start of the 2023-24 NBA regular season. So what does this mean? Well, I'm going to be up at 5.30 every morning before work to do my fantasy basketball research. Bridget, ask your brother. I'm up at 5.30 every morning just to make my, oh my picks. God. Every day. And every morning at 6 a.m., Brent's on there like, boom, boom, dropping this player, adding this player every day. But it also means that James Harden starts his annual blame my team, teammates, in the front office as to why I can't win anything circuit. So today here at We Miss the Exit, we're going to go over the Harden problems and where he could possibly end up to actually help that team and help himself. So let's take this exit and get into it. First off, who is James Harden? Harden is not a winning player. Now he's helped teams get wins during the regular season, but he's not a guy who will get you to your ultimate goal of hoisting up that Larry O'Brien trophy. He's never been an alpha for a team, meaning he doesn't have the mentality of a guy who wants to win at all costs. You need to think about Kobe Bryant and that Mamba mentality, Michael Jordan taking over a game, or call him Tim Duncan who is team and defense first. We know money is important to him. Money and stats are his goals. I'm not knocking it, as it's his money that he's earned in accordance with the front office that gave him that contract. So if I'm Harden in August of 2023, I want a team that'll give me my next big contract. But let's play the hypothetical game now. Maybe Harden finally has a change if Harden wants to win. We need to find a good fit for him. So where does he stand? He still puts up a lot of good numbers. The emphasis on the numbers. 21 points, 11 assists, 6 rebounds per game in 58 games. Pretty good. But at 33 years and 359 days old at the recording of this video, he's kind of beyond his prime. So what would be a good fit for Harden if he wants to win? We know he needs to be the third fiddle at this point. And for this hypothetical right now, I'm not going to take into consideration like salaries and things like that. Not yet. And we also know that the 76ers are really looking for picks at this point rather than players. So I'm going to hold off on that idea as well. This is mainly about what would be a good fit for Harden to finally win or to help a team out. To start, let's take out the tanking, the young teams, the rebuilding teams. Although being on an expiring contract, these tanking teams might actually want to exchange them for their current bad contracts. So we're going to get rid of Detroit Pistons, Washington Wizards, Charlotte Hornets, Spurs, Jazz, Magic, Nets, Rockets. So what kind of teams could really use Harden's strengths? Well, a team that needs offense could use him, a team that needs a strong floor general for their offense, and a team that already has an above average or better defense, because we all know Harden's not going to play any defense. And no, kids, getting a bunch of steals does not make you a good defender, just means you're good at getting into the passing lane, which is one part of it. That's why Tony Allen is a much better defensive player than a guy like James Harden. Let's start with the Bucks. They already have a solid defense as they were a bit average on paper, although Holiday, Middleton, Giannis, and Lopez are all above average defenders or better. They already have enough ball handlers with Holiday and Giannis and have a good offense last year, being ninth. Although we learned if Giannis gets hurt, their offense isn't really terrible, but their defense suffers greatly. So the Bucks, not a great fit. The Bulls have the 22nd best offense, which is weird when you see Levine, DeRozan, and Vucevic. They also somehow had the 7th best team defense. So on paper, the Bulls should want Harden. And honestly, a team of Harden, Levine, DeRozan, and Vucevic should be a good offensive team. I also don't know how an aging DeRozan continues to get better with age. It might just be a big hit defensively, though. The Cavaliers had the best defense last season, so there's no reason to believe that they'll get any worse. They already have Mitchell and Garland to run the offense, but it wasn't that great last year as they were towards the bottom at 25th. On paper, they could use Harden. I just don't think it's a good fit. The Celtics had a great defense last year, being fourth, and although they did lose Smart, I think they'll still be a pretty good defensive team. They don't really need a ball handler, as they already have Tatum, Brown, White, Brogdon, and Pritchard, and they don't really need help offensively, being fourth last year, and they just got Porzingis too. Not a good fit for the Celtics. The Clippers have recently been rumored to be after Harden, although the 76ers want picks, not players. The Clippers had a slightly below average offense and a slightly above average defense. Maybe Harden could help as he would be the third fiddle if he went to the Clippers. However, since George and Kawhi are only part-time players, this might actually work out for him. Kawhi hasn't played more than 60 games since 2017. Clippers do have Westbrook as well. If all Clippers are healthy, it's not a good fit, but what are the chances that that actually happens? This is a bit of a toss-up, it all depends. The Grizzlies already had an above average defense last year being 11th, and then they acquired Marcus Smart, the 2022 Defensive Player of the Year to match with Jackson, the most recent Defensive Player of the Year. They had a good offense last year being 8th, but they will be losing Morant for the first 25 games. That means they'll be without their best ball handler for a while. Plus they also lost Tyus Jones. They could probably use Harden actually. The Hawks, one of my buddy's favorite teams. They had the third best offense in the NBA last year, plus they already had two strong ball handlers with Young and Murray. They also had the 26th worst team defense last year, and I don't think getting Hunter back is going to help them that much more. Nor has Murray gone back to his defensive strengths like he did in the 2018 season. This would be a terrible fit for the Hawks. 
the Miami Heat had the second best team defense last year, but if something happens to Butler or Bam, it'll go downhill really quick. But usually when you have a Spolstra run defense, your Spolstra offense will be towards the bottom as well, and they were. They will be getting Hero back, which not having him for the finals really hurt them last year. Now while Harden will help this team, let me ask you, would you rather have Lillard or Harden? Also, let me ask you this. How many minutes into the first Spolcher defensive practice would Harden last until he demands another trade? 10 minutes, you taking the over or the under. Would he help? Yes. A good fit for team chemistry? Hell no. Plus there's no way my boy Jimmy Buckets would deal with Harden for 5 seconds. The Kings had the best offense in the NBA last season and boy were they fun. They also had the 25th worst defense in the NBA. It'd be terrible for the Kings to get Harden if they wanted to win. That being said, Harden would be so much fun to watch with Sabonis, Herter, and Fox. This would be a terrible fit. On to my Knicks, who had a better season last year, but that was mostly due to Brunson. Their defense was slightly above average, being 12th in the NBA. The offense was slightly above average as well, being 11th. If Brunson gets hurt, Randall cannot run a team. No one else, RJ, Quickly, DiVincenzo, is strong enough to really take over for Brunson. Harden could work in New York, but I will stand in front of MSG every day to block Harden from ever getting inside and putting on a Knicks jersey. Unfortunately, this would be a decent fit as long as Tibbs can deal with him on defense. The Lakers had a pretty high potent offense being 6 in the NBA last year and they'll be fine again this year. They also had a below average defense being 20th and they didn't really get much better outside of signing Prince. This would be a terrible fit unless Harden is okay with coming off the bench while Russell, Davis, and LeBron all go off the court. The Mavericks having the most average team with the offense being 16th and the defense being 16th. But could you imagine trying to share the ball between Irving and Dunkage? They tried the Irving Harden before and we all know how that turned out. Actually, the Nets came out a lot more promising with Bridges, Cam Johnson, and not having to worry about Irving and Harden. This would be a terrible fit. The reigning champs, the Denver Nuggets, they had a pretty good offense last year being 12th, but if Murray gets hurt again, they don't really have a floor general in the backcourt. They do with Jokic in the frontcourt, but not so much the backcourt. They do have a solid defense being 8th last year. I actually think this would be a decent fit, especially offensively, not so much defensively. The Pacers had the second worst defense in the NBA last year, but they did have the 10th best offense despite losing Halliburton at the end. If there's an injury, the Pacers could use Harden, but their defenses are just way too atrocious to even think about it. This would be a terrible fit. The Pelicans had the 10th best defense in the NBA, somehow, and only an average offense being 15th. On paper, the Pelicans could use Harden, but if CJ, Ingram, Williamson, and Jonas could all stay healthy, I don't think they need Harden at all. I don't see this being a good fit. The Raptors, the team that can't figure out if they're trying to tank and rebuild or not, especially losing their second best player, Fred Van Vliet. They should look to move Siakam and rebuild, but that's not why we're here. The Raptors had the fifth best defense and the 24th best offense. On paper, this team could really use Harden in their floor general skills, and Schroeder is not the type of player that can really help enough. This team would likely be playoff bound and could make noise if they acquired Harden. I could see this being a good fit. The Suns. Could you imagine them also getting Harden on top of Chris Paul and Beal and Durant and Booker? They already have those guys to manage the ball. They had a good defense last year, but I think they're going to take a hit this year. They do not need Harden. This would be a terrible fit. The Thunder had the fifth best offense in the NBA last year. Their defense was a little bit below average, being 19th. I don't see their defense really getting that much better. Plus, this team is on the rise. The last thing they need is Harden to come in. This would be a terrible fit. The Timberwolves had an average offense last year, being 13th, but it wouldn't be good to match an empty stat backcourt player with an empty stat frontcourt player with Cat. They had a below average defense despite having Gobert, Conley, Edwards, McDaniels. On paper, my gut says this would be a horrible fit, but we've seen weirder things happen. This is a toss up for me. The Trailblazers had a below average offense at 19th. They also had a terrible 23rd best defense last year. This team is not good defensively enough to go warrant getting Harden, even though he would probably help them offensively. We've already seen what happens though when you pair Harden with another guy who needs the ball to be their best with Lillard. This would not be a good fit either. And finally, the Warriors, who had the second best offense last year. They did lose Jordan Poole, but they did get CP3. While they do play very differently, you're trading in a high potent scorer with a floor general. Plus, we've already seen the CP3 Harden experiment before, 
and while the team was just a win away from getting to the finals, I don't think that's going to turn out too well again this year in this team. This would be a terrible fit. So what are my top 10 teams that might be able to mesh well with Harden? Number 10, I'm going to put the T-Wolves just because that might be a fun mix. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Number 9, I'm going to put the Lakers as long as he comes off on a bench roll. Number 8, again with the Cavs, I'm going to say a bench roll might be a good fit. Number 7, the Heat because there's a need rather than a fit. Number 6, I'm going to put the Clippers here because we know Kawhi and George aren't going to be playing very much. Number 5, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I think the Nuggets could actually use Harden. Number 4 are going to be the Bulls. Number three are gonna be my Knicks. Number two, I think he would really help out the Raptors. I just don't know if he'd be enough to be able to get them in contention. Playoff team, but not contention. But number one, I think if he goes to the Grizzlies, he makes that team ready and contending. So there you have it. What would be a good fit for Harden? Again, I'm not factoring in who or what pieces would be needed to get Harden. At this point, it would pretty much be salary matching because the 76ers said they want picks rather than players. Let me know what you think down below. Was this a good list? Would you wanna see Harden on your favorite team?